Yo, 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 it's your boy, Melly Mel, a.k.a. King Jaffe, one-third of GMS. And welcome to the podcast, good people. I hope you enjoy. What's up, everybody? This is your boy, GQ Smooth, coming at you live out of Raleigh, North Carolina, man. This is GMS Podcast, where we come at you live weekly with raw and uncut content. What's going on, people? I'm one of your co-hosts, Shahid, a.k.a. Triple M, a.k.a. Maximize Motivational Muscles, a.k.a. Mr. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, man himself. And I want you guys to tune in. That's right. Tune in to GMS. S, grown man subjects. We talk about everything from sports, news, politics, entrepreneurship. We have great content coming for you guys. So get ready and subscribe. Killer Mike, you know, uh, my song, like dudes like that, that are, you know, for us, you know, they speak for the unspoken. They speak for the streets. They speak mm. for young black men. They speak mm. for, you know, uh, the people that are being oppressed. <laughs> All right, guys, appreciate y'all for tuning in. I'm your co-host, Shahi, a.k.a. Triple M, a.k.a. Maximize Motivational Muscles. I got my co-host here. Who going first? Who going first? Hey, I'm GQ. I'm Mel, a.k.a. King Joffrey. But, you know, keep it short and simple as Mel. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, man. So definitely, you know, glad glad we got everybody here today. Um, of course, man, you know, when, 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 when this episode dropped, man, you know, um, you know, we're going to have everything, the subjects in the caption, everything like that, man. But first off, man, we want to get into the top, your top five, uh, scary movies, especially, you know, with it being a Halloween time of year right now, man. Mel, what's your top five? What's your top five, bro? What's your top five? Man, my top five. So I had to go back. Man, to, right. my, to the early 2000s because you know I fell off mm -hmm. off of, off of horror movies. I'm not ever gonna lie to you. I, okay, I, I stopped. I stopped watching it <laughs> just because I lost interest. You know, I stopped. You know, I didn't want to pay for somebody to scare me. So mm -hmm. you know, I just <laughs> but this is my top five. Okay, uh, and and this is in order. I'll start with number five. Number five, yeah. I had The Conjuring. The Conjuring mm -hmm. that was scary. Okay. Number one okay. and two okay. was scary. Okay. Four. I got Scream Two. Scream Two specifically. Okay. Mm. Okay. Number three, Saw. Now mm. you can pick whichever Saw series you want, but for me, it was the original one. Okay. 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 Number two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It went out. That out. was one it of the. Out. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the, you know, first couple horror movies I seen in in theater, and that one had mm -hmm. me on edge the whole time. And okay. then number one, to me. The scariest movie I've seen all the time is The Ring. Is the Ring had I had nightmares. I had no. nightmares after watching The Ring for 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 quite some time, and yeah, that left an impact on my mind for a while. That, that came <laughs> yeah, out in two thousand two. Yeah, right. two thousand two. Yep. Okay. 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 Um. All right, got you. So, so I noticed that with your list, I didn't hear now one. I didn't hear now one Michael Myers Halloween in there. <laughs> so I actually had the conjuring in Halloween tied with number five. Mm, but okay, for okay. me, the conjuring did kind of edge out Halloween. It did. Mm, it did. It okay, edged okay. It out. But I did I did have Halloween as like an honorable mention. Okay, okay, okay. Respect, mm -hmm. respect, respect. Okay. G, what you got, baby? What you got? What you got? All right. So yo, it's crazy, but I got the ring number one as well. Okay. Yo, we talk about like that was like one of wow. the scariest movies, like in yes. two thousand two. As a kid, watching that, then we you know the way how they, they, they watch the tape, and once you seen the tape, it was over for you. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I was like, yo, we watch, <laughs> we watch the tape, man. <laughs> we yo, watching yes. The tape right now too. So I'm like, yo, yeah. what happened to us? <laughs> facts, facts, so, facts, hey, facts, facts. Man, that that movie was crazy scary, man. Um, second one was Saw. And mm -hmm. the reason why I saw it was so scary to me because I was like, yo, any lunatic to kidnap you, like, make mm -hmm. you play this crazy, sick game where, like, the only way you're going to survive is by basically, like, passing his, his like, crazy game. I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. that, that, mm -hmm. that was the craziest. So, all the songs here are crazy, but the original yeah, yeah. man was just like, man, that's that's neat. That's neat. Yeah, for you. Um, the third one for me is uh, Paranormal Activity. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 
<laughs> yeah. I thought about that one. I thought about that one. When I seen that, man, I, me, me, I don't like like movies when dealing with like supernatural, like evil spirit stuff. Like, mm-hmm. that, yeah, I don't know. It's something about it. I don't, I don't really like watching it, but mm-hmm. that movie right there was definitely like one of the ones that like, kept me up at night. And after watching it, I ain't gonna lie, I had to turn on Nickelodeon all night to <laughs> 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 be able to go to sleep. <laughs> Like, oh, that's how man. Scary, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, I think for the fourth one, I had to say uh, Test of Chainsaw as well. That was a scary one for me um, okay. as a kid as well. Because it was based on a true story. So any movie that was based on a true story, I'm like, yo, that's that's crazy. Why, why would I do in that situation? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And uh, five, I went back to my childhood for this one. Candyman. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Candyman, Ooh. Candyman was another one for me. Okay. They dealt with the supernatural, ghostly type stuff. Mm-hmm. And then this, the Candyman, he was freaky looking. Like he was tall. I think he was like six five in real life. But the way he looked, he was just tall, skinny. Had bees coming out of his mouth and stuff. And he, he was just so yeah. So freaky. so speaking of Candyman, bro. <laughs> speaking of Candyman. You actually informed me about a new one that's actually coming out the updated version, man. So yeah, tell me yeah, how you yeah. how you how how you feeling about that? How you feeling about that? Hey, uh, from the trailer, man, it looks like it's gonna be interesting. I think it was supposed to come out this year, but I guess you know because of COVID, they pushed it back. I think it's gonna come out next year. Okay. So I'm looking forward to the to the remake of it. See how it is compared to the original version. So we are gonna mm-hmm. see. All right. Okay. 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 I noticed. I noticed. I'm not hearing like no kind of Michael Myers. Uh, I mean, Michael I'm not Myers. No like, Jason. I, 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 I would mail that one. It, it was kind of tied with fifth. All right. Okay. But I ain't gonna lie. Michael Myers didn't really scare me. Right. But it's like, yeah, I think I they know, were more like, suspenseful. Yeah. More than like, horror. Like, you know. Like, yeah. Okay. I got you, man. So I think the list. We definitely, we definitely got movies in common, bro. So I'm gonna go backwards. I'm gonna start five and then give you my one. All right. So I, I got kind of like a, I got I got kind of like a, like a theme with this list, right? All right. So the first thing, number five, I'm going backwards. Number five, I put it, right? Yeah. So the reason why I put a lot of movies on here is like, like real life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I like I do believe like they did have. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was going around. Um, right. He was he was getting the kids. He was killing the kids and things like that. Um, mm. abducting them. It was based on, um, a, true was based on a true yeah. story. Um, that's number five. Number four, paranormal activity. Um, I remember being in theaters, right? <laughs> and I think at the time, this was at a time where I was like, uh, I was like, a, I was like a big movie head. So any new movie that dropped that was like a hit, I was definitely going to see, man. And I was always one of those kind of people who like. Uh, when you had to like start assigning seats and things like that, I always mm-hmm. got like the real close, but like in the middle, up close in person, like type of seat, right? Yeah. So I remember when uh, the dude go downstairs because uh, his girl is downstairs. This is the first one, yeah. and like you hear like you hear him go downstairs and she's screaming, he's screaming, and then you just stop hearing both voices, but you start yeah. hearing footsteps. Right. So I remember hearing the footsteps. Now, you can't tell where they're coming from, but you just hear the footsteps because it's dark. And then when they threw when uh, she threw homeboy at the camera at us. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was like, I was like, oh, that's that's <laughs> crazy. So I think like I think what made it even more real life was because they was recording it from a camcorder. Right. Like, it, I was, was, it, like was a, it was low budget. Yeah, that low it, budget it, film it was, actually right. made it more scary. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it and, it, yeah. and it was crazy because up until that point in time, bro, I can't really think about a movie that I actually watched from that point of view. Like, really? You oh, want to do it from a camp? Uh, Blair Witch Project was one. Yeah, okay, right. Blair Witch yeah, Project. Yeah. And um, what's, it, it was another one. Um, um, uh, uh, uh. Oh my goodness! It was like it was like it, it was it was in New York. Um, it was like kind of like crazy animals type of. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, bro! I'm trying to think of the movie Cloverfield. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Cloverfield. Yeah. Yeah. Cloverfield, Cloverfield. Um, so that was number four. The number three was The Exorcist. Like, Dang. that's 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 kind of like I don't even got to go into detail yeah, with yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, right? detail. Um, <laughs> number two, number two. I had the ring. Number two. I had number two. Now the only reason why this isn't number, the only reason why the ring isn't number one is because I feel like with this movie right here, bro. Like, again, man, it just, like, I just really feel like, like, this, like, reality. 
I got number mm. one being us. And wow. I just felt like us meant, first of all, big shout out to Jordan Peele. Like, yeah. that man is a great uh, director. Like, he does Jeez. his thing. Like, he really makes the movie come to life. And yeah, just does. like, I've seen that movie twice, right? And of course, you know, you never catch everything the first time. You know, you always got to go back second and third and fourth time. And it was a couple of things that I actually seen the second time that I didn't see the first time. And just like that whole, like, you battling yourself and, like, yeah. you existing in another realm different from this one, like, it's, bro, that's just, like, I, I just love the way he hit it. And he he made it, like, not so much of a horror film, but he was able to capture... Um, some kind of scariness with the suspensefulness and like an alternate reality of you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just think like he just like took all of that and was able to like make that masterpiece, bro. And like that was when Us came out. That was 2000 and was that 19? 2018, 19? I think because so. 18, 19. 19. Yeah. 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 Whenever it probably was 19. Yeah. Whenever Us came out, that was a year after Get Out. Because yeah, I think, and I, and, I, and I think he probably, yeah. he probably had the best movies of the year, back-to-back -back years. Like, yeah. I don't think yeah. any movie that I've seen that year um, was better than us. Like, as far as, like, a plot, a storyline. Um, and then in the right. ending, like, but, like it, it was, like, so I just feel like Jordan Peele, he did his thing with that one. And, yeah, man, so, I, I like, my number one is definitely us, man. Um, I didn't I, I didn't put Michael Myers or Jason um, on my list. The closest person I got to my list was Freddy. Only reason yeah, why is agree. because you got to go to sleep. You got to go to sleep. <laughs> you got to go to sleep. <laughs> I thought, about, go to I sleep, thought about Freddy. I definitely thought about Freddy. Yeah. 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 That one did scare yeah. me, though, because you, you, you got to go to sleep. You got you to go to sleep, bro. <laughs> But it, it didn't take yeah. the realness over those other movies that I put on my list. Um, yeah, Chucky, yeah. I really, I, I never was feeling Chucky, but I understand nah. somewhat, you know what I mean? That was um, more funny to me. Yeah, facts. Yeah, facts, facts. Um, I, I like the Scream. I like, and I felt like when Scream first came out, I was like, because you kind of didn't know who the dude was. Like, you thought it was just one person. But then right, to come yeah. to find out, it was, it was multiple. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um. Uh. Uh. Um, what's another? What's another one? Um. So yeah, those were just like honorable mentions, man. Uh, Freddie was probably the 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 first one I was probably could have cracked that number five between him and it. You know what I'm saying? But I was just like, yeah. you know what? Just 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 for the like actual real life. Man. I had I had so Jeepers it. Creepers in mind too, but and that's like Jeepers Creepers. Hey. Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, it's a tough one. one. <laughs> it's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's a real tough one. Um. Yeah, yeah, man. No, so, no, uh, le no leprechaun horror movies either, huh? <laughs> couldn't think of what. I couldn't think of one. Uh, only leprechaun movies I'm thinking about is like Leprechaun in the Hood, and I'm like, yeah, that's the only one. Right? Yeah. 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 So I was like, <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I was like ah, you know what I'm saying? Any leprechaun movies? Nah. Um, I I did think of a zombie movie, but I think yeah, movies are just so saturated right now that it took mm -hmm. the freeness out of it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But but yeah, I remember like the like one of the first zombie movies I watched, and this was probably like one of the worst movies ever was probably like Vampire in Brooklyn. And like when I it, it was it was it was popular. But I look yeah. and since like we was looking back on it like maybe like a week a half week and a half ago, we were like Vampire in Brooklyn. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> but if it wasn't for those actors, it probably wouldn't have did as great as it did. You know what I'm saying? Right. See, they got a series on Netflix that has like vampires in the Bronx or something like. Yeah, that. I've seen that. It's, yeah, I've seen it's, that too. it's pretty good. It's good. Actually. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's actual it's, series or it's a movie. That's a movie. It's a movie. It's a movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty good. It has you know little aspects of like gentrification. And okay. Okay. It's, it's, there's a story behind the story, so it's pretty mm -hmm. cool. It's pretty okay. cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. 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 All right. So the next topic up. NBA related, man. Doc Rivers to Philly. And we can go ahead and add Daryl Morey to Philly as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that, man? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's going to be big for Joel Embiid if he stays. Um, mm -hmm. Him and Ben Simmons, you know, 
as far as their development, even if it's for a year, you know, Doc Rivers is probably one of the top three coaches in this generation, you know, behind mm-hmm. like Pop and maybe some other, somebody else, you know, I'll just put them in mm-hmm. the top three. So he's going to, you know, he's going to develop these players to be better than what they are. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can only, I can only imagine what Embiid will be like at the end of the year with Doc Rivers. Um, I feel like they need that type of coach to go deep in the playoffs, you know, um, just with his style of play, he knows how to slow it down. And then mm-hmm. obviously his defense is always, you know, usually top rated in the NBA as well. So true. true. That is going to help them tremendously. I think yep. it's a good move, man. I like this. I like this move. Mm. But if Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons ain't there, yeah, if they ain't there. That's the thing, right there. Mm. You know, if 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 they if they not if they not there, G, um, are you giving up both of them? Are you giving up one of them? Are you? I mean, I don't think you get rid of, of both. You get rid of one. I mean, obviously, the talks has been about, you know, Ben Simmons going to uh, Houston and then them possibly getting Harden. Now, that's, that's something like that goes down, man. Mm. You know, Philly, Philly is primed to win the championship mm. right away. <laughs> Especially with Doc, you know, in command. Like, they, I think he can push uh, Harden to the next level. Mm. I think he can push uh, Embiid to the next level. And he, I, I'll even see Doc like bringing in somebody like a KG to like coach mm. and, and be on you know, how to like be that dog yes. every night, yes. you know. Yes. So now, now Mel Harden is your man. Harden is your man, right? That's my, that's um, my guy. Yep. Uh, I agree with G. Push Harden to the next level. Yeah. When you look at Harden, right? Harden's already in my hands. Is as she's oh, that's crazy. Um, when you look at Harden, Harden's already a top five player. We not right. we not disputing that, right? Yeah. Still don't feel like he's a superstar. What yeah. next level is it for Harden? Because he's clearly top five. And what does that next level look like, bro? What what does it look like? I think the next level is just him getting the results in the playoffs. And what I mean by that is, you know, he's he's competed against the best team in the West, Golden State, and you see he's brought them to seven games. And he, at, at points, was the best player on the court. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, to me, I feel like he's proven enough to be, you know, considered a superstar. I feel like, He's 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 proven enough to be considered like just that guy in the league. But like Chris Paul, they need just that hardware to back it up, or they mm-hmm. need at least. Uh, and I don't I don't mean to bring Chris Paul in, but for James Harden, I'll just stay with him. Mm-hmm. He needs at least the finals appearance to kind of mm-hmm. solidify his spot. You know, um, yeah. Obviously, a chip is going to really take him to to the next level, and mm-hmm. I think. With a chip, we'll, we would look at James Harden completely different than what we, we do would. now. Yeah. I, I, I honestly think <laughs> we so. Would. Um, we would. We um, would. But, uh, yeah, it's just going to come down to him actually getting to the finals and winning one because he's gotten to the Western Conference finals numerous yeah. times. So, yeah. I don't think, you know, going deep in the playoffs, he's done it. You know, done MVP, it. scoring titles, he's done it. So, it's just a matter of winning the championship. Mm. That's it. Yeah, now, that's it, really. Now, when you think of Harden, right, <clears throat> when we think of LeBron, superstar, mm-hmm. Steph Curry, superstar, um, Kevin Durant, um, I, I think we think of Kevin Durant and we say superstar, right? Yeah. He may not be as much of a, as a household name as LeBron and Steph, but I feel like he's right there. I feel like he's right there. Yeah. James Harden, is James Harden a superstar? I, think I mean, so. I, I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah. I think so, okay. I think, you know, and it's funny you ask that because if we were to have a criteria for what a superstar is, I think mm-hmm. he would literally be, be straddling that line. You know what I mean? He'd have one foot in, as a superstar and <laughs> one foot as a star. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> because of, you know, the lack of finals appearances in what so what a lot of people say is his defense, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's really the, the, that's yeah, really what's um holding back defense. is his defense. Defensive sure. like, offensively, nobody can stop that man. Yeah. Offensively. We we seen this for years. Like he's putting up numbers year in, year out, where we're like, damn. <laughs> you know, 
Yeah, I mean, he's average like what thirty the last what couple of seasons, right? Yeah, facts. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, okay, so I mean, outside of outside of Kevin Durant, he's probably what second best scoring uh, yeah. threat for for this generation right here, pretty much uh, yeah. outside of Kevin I mean, Durant. Statistically, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah. For um, sure. Okay. I, I say he, he's the best shooting guard right now in the NBA. Greek freak, superstar. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I think so. I think okay. so. I think it's. I think it's the same thing with the Greek freak. Like the only thing that's like you know holding them back is getting to the finals. Okay, playoff, playoff uh, success. So if it's the same thing, I've seen both of you guys less reluctant on questioning if Greek freak is a superstar than you did James Harden. Why, when James Harden has been in the league longer, he's been consistent mm-hmm. longer, he's been that uh, top man longer. Why? Why are Honestly, you more I'm, reluctant? I would be I, – I, I feel like I'm more reluctant to call Giannis a superstar. Mm, okay. Um, not to knock Giannis. I think he's a great player. He's actually mm-hmm. one of my favorite players, probably behind Harden too. Mm-hmm. But I also think he's been overhyped. He got – he had the hype train since, you mm-hmm. know, for the past three years. And people are putting him in a stratosphere that I don't think he's – he's not – at that level yet, and people yeah, are putting yeah, yeah. with those LeBrons yeah. and the KDs. Mm-hmm. He's not there mm-hmm. yet. He's not. He's yeah, in the I same to, category as Jay. I have to agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I have to agree right with there. that. Okay. I think the only thing that's, like, stopping Giannis, man, is that when it comes to playoff basketball, mm-hmm. every year we see a team have a game plan that stops him. And he hasn't he hasn't developed that offensive enough to, like, where he can be like, okay, this is not going to stop me this year. And the only thing he needs is a jump shot. We, we know that. Cause they, every team, every team builds a wall every year, and it has an effect on him. So until he gets like some kind of you know consistent jumper, like it's gonna keep happening. All right, now be a little more specific. When you say a jumper, we talking about fifteen feet, eighteen feet. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, have, it doesn't even. Have, it can be mid range. It could be three pointer. Okay. Okay. He, doesn't, he doesn't. He doesn't have to be like. Let me uh, let me clear the air. Like he doesn't have to be Steph Curry. He doesn't have to be Clay Thompson. He just gotta be able to shoot. <laughs> mm. That's it. You just gotta make him respect right. your shot. That's it. Nah, like like, like Rondo, like how Rondo did this year. Like Rondo's not a Steph Curry, but yeah. he was not looking- threes. <laughs> he <laughs> he mm. mm. I think of him in his offensive game, and I think of like a Jimmy Butler. If he can kind of turn yeah. into that as mm. far as shot selection, yeah. where Jimmy Butler doesn't take threes at all. Yeah, he doesn't really take threes at all. He's, He's smart. Still. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, you know, yeah. when he does they count, you know what I mean? They're smart mm-hmm. three. So, mm-hmm. but my question to y'all and I, is, is, has he reached his ceiling? Giannis. Mm. Gian- Giannis? Has Giannis reached his ceiling. I think that's up to him. Mm. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's up to him. That's, that's a good answer. He can, he, yeah, he can definitely get yeah. better. It's just how much work are you willing to put in? So do you think that's he really can develop a jump shot? Do you think he can I, be that I, guy? I feel, like, I feel like anybody can develop a jump shot if they're willing to put in the work. Got you. Got you. Because um, I, I also consider him the Ben Simmons too. Yeah, just to start that yeah. out there, man. Yeah. I, I I would I would I would definitely have to. It, it is up to him. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like I feel like if I say if I said if I say he's already reached his ceiling, I feel like because of his his age plays a big factor in this because mm-hmm. he is young. You know, um, yeah. that's kind of like you know putting a ceiling on. Luca or putting the ceiling on um, Trey or putting the ceiling on Donovan Mitchell, Jamal Murray, right. Zach Levine. Like some of these guys, all, they do right. hit their ceiling early. Some guys hit their ceiling early. Some guys. Some guys. That's some true. Guys. But I know what you're saying. I know. But, just to be but, devil advocate. But, 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 but do they hit their ceiling early or is it the situation has hit the ceiling? Mm. Because, like, I take a play right. – and, and, and G and I had this conversation. I take a play like Zach Levine. I mm-hmm. would take Zach Levine – over a Trey, uh, a Trey Young, I would take a Zach Levine For over. Sure. I, I probably, I probably would take a Trey Young over like. A, I would take a a, 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 um, a Zach Levine over Jamal Murray. I would probably, Ooh. it would probably be head to head if I had to choose between Donovan Mitchell. But me, I, yeah. I because I really like his game. I feel like he has an yeah. all around game. He does. Honestly. He does though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He really does. Um, we may not see as much Chicago games. Right. But I do feel like he has an all around game. I'm not really big on Trey Young. I'm not really big on him, man. So I mean you, you put know. you put a Zach in any big market name, like your people are gonna start to recognize like his yeah, game. Yeah. Truly. 
He has, he has game. But because cool. Chicago don't make the, uh, you know, national airlines that much, people don't mm-hmm. really get to see him that much. So, right, yeah. right. You know, um, which, uh, you know, I, I hear there's been a lot of rumblings over uh, like 2K ratings <laughs> and things mm-hmm. of that nature. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I didn't realize how, how, how serious take, how, how, how players really take those ratings serious. Yeah. Like, Serious, they really take those ratings yeah. serious. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, it was a few ratings that I, I was, I was like, what? Like, like, I, <laughs> yeah, and, you and know I, what I'm saying? I'll say, I, I'll say the first one off my, the first one off my head was Trey Young, and then another one was, uh, was um, oh man, what's his name? Was it Zion? I'm mm-hmm. not picking Trey Young or Zion before I pick Zach Levine. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just not doing that. And they had ratings that was higher than his. And I'm just like, yeah. this, like you being mad disrespectful. Like I feel like they were even being disrespectful to like John ja Morant to a point because you only have John ja Morant rated like one more point higher than Zion. Mm-hmm. Like this man, this man played the whole entire season and was consistent. That was the only reason why Memphis was yeah. even in the running to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, and you mean to tell me that he was only one more point higher? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I mean, I get it because. Everybody is uh, everybody is really crazy on the Zion train, and you can tell that the, when the NBA want to push a player, the NBA they will push, push a player. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we've yeah. seen that happen. You know, um, so it's like, man, like, like give that man his props, man. I feel like they they they're not giving his props that he clearly earned. He clearly earned. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. but yeah, and you know, I know the ratings. They actually. They have it to where like they change based off of the players' performance. Yeah, they, they do change. Based now, off the now, now it's like yeah. you know, if you okay. having a like a bad stretch for two weeks, they'll drop you like ten points <laughs> or something like I didn't that. Know that. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like there'll be like a trending arrow going down and everything. That's great. Right. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. This, this guy, yeah. So like is, these players is, definitely is, stay on top of that. Is that is that too much? Is that too much involved or like? I think, I it, I think, think it's 2K so. trying to make the game more realistic. So, like, if yeah, a player is yeah. having, like, a cold streak, then they'll have a cold streak in the game as well so that you can't, like, be effective with them, like, yeah, on a game. Crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it, I don't get, you, it don't get no more updated than that. Yeah. No. <laughs> John, John Morant, when he was playing at, like, peak, peak level during the season, he probably was, you know, five, yeah, ten points was, above where yeah. Zion was. And then yeah, he, was. he started kind of coming down to earth in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and that's okay. probably what brought him back. I'm sure. Got you. Okay, okay, okay. See, I didn't, I didn't know that. Okay, 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 okay. Damn, that's 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 crazy. That's yeah, crazy. They, yeah, definitely go into both, great detail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Madden too. Yeah. Oh man, they, they do the same thing with me. Yeah, I haven't played. Yeah, they do the same Madden thing, man. So too. Long, bro. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. So like, players really be upset about these ratings, bro. Like, I seen <laughs> them. Like, like I seen some players. Them. Yeah. I seen players like on a temper tantrum low key, and I was just like, "Yo, how serious can it just a rating, bro? Like, like <laughs> right. seriously?" But I didn't know, like, yo, this is something that's like, it's 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 a part of it's 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 a part of who I am. Like, I remember, um, mm-hmm. I can't remember what year it was, but um, Clay Thompson was balling as usual, and um, because he didn't make one of the All NBA teams, I think they wound up outing him like he he got left out maybe like. 20, 30 million, and I was yeah, like, yeah. and I was just like, yo, Clay Thompson. Name name three players that's better than Clay Thompson as a two guard. Only player I can think of, only two players I can think of at that time, and still now is James Harden and Jimmy Butler. Nobody was, yeah. So I don't, I'm, and, and I'm actually gonna pull that up. I don't remember what year it was. It might have been a year where Steph won back to back MVPs. I'm not sure. But um, I don't know what year it was, man. But uh, it might have been uh, 2018. 2018. I'm, 2018 I'm, or 2019. One of those. 2018. I'm like, yo, it, was, it wasn't long ago. It, it wasn't. It wasn't because I remember Steph. Uh, I remember Skip and um, was was that Skip and Stephen A going at it or was that Stephen A and Max? Yeah, yeah it was it was Stephen A and Max. Stephen A and Max. Yeah, Stephen A and Max. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, man. That's um. That's 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 definitely crazy right there. Um yeah. man, just you know, switching switching subjects. We got about another another nine, ten minutes left, man. How are we feeling about the uh the presidential campaign? How it's going, man. Are you are you guys tired of getting those text messages yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got I got like three text messages uh this morning, man. <laughs> right. I'm like, they man, still I, they still sending them. <laughs> I already voted, man. They're talking about Man, sure you tell other people to vote. I'm like, dang, I want me to be responsible for other people too. <laughs> so, 
So uh, they 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 got a little creative these 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 last uh, yeah. today and yesterday. So I read a text message. They were like, they were like, yeah, you know, I hope you're having a great Halloween. I'm gonna tell you what would be the scariest thing is for <laughs> Biden to be in office. I was like, okay, that's that's wow. catchy. That's catchy. Yeah. That's, you caught my attention with that one. I, I yeah. give you credit for that. One. I give you credit for yeah. that. One. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I see that they they they're taking uh the the um the regular area codes. Like it's not coming from like a. A three four is coming from like yeah, your local area like code. Local, you know what I'm saying? Right. Which yeah. I give it to them because that's definitely a great way to market because they like, all right, we know you located in you know Raleigh, North Carolina, or you know you might right. be in Charleston, South Carolina. We are gonna come mm-hmm. with the same area code at you. So that was that was that was actually that was actually a pretty good marketing plan. So I give it to them on that one. Um, ha, ha, have you guys uh, watched any of the? Uh, any of the second debate? If so, man, how do you guys how do you guys feel about it? How is it different than the first debate or anything like that? <laughs> well, the last one between uh Trump and Biden, yeah, I, I saw that one. And it was actually, I mean, it was pretty boring to be honest. Like it, <laughs> there wasn't much that happened. You know, I think the, the biggest difference was they had a mute button. So mm-hmm. People, you know, Donald Trump wasn't talking over Biden. Biden wasn't wasn't talking over Trump. There wasn't really mm-hmm. much interruption. And uh, the mediator, she had like really good control over it. So mm-hmm. it was, right. you know, it was to the point for the most part. You know, I, to me, they both, you know, they were both lying. They both, I shouldn't say they were both lying, but they both said some lies. Uh, mm-hmm. Biden and Trump, you know, specifically, I can't remember everything, but. I, you know, they they both were just kind of spewing out lies. You know what I mean? And that's just how it's been, to, in my opinion, for the past few months. <laughs> so mm, yeah. nothing, nothing new, nothing new. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, G, how are you feeling as far as as far as the campaign is going? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, and I've heard Trump say this on many occasions, man. Um, <laughs> he said, uh. I have done the most for I've I've been the one who's done the math the most for black people. Yeah. yeah since say, Abraham Lincoln. Since Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, yeah, Abraham yeah. Lincoln. Let me let me yeah, get the yeah. quote right. Let me get the quote right. <laughs> um, yeah, you good. Like first off, like like when he say that, like when he when you first heard him say that, because he said it numerous times. When you first heard him say that, bro, mm. like what was like the first thing that went to your mind, bro? <laughs> BS. <laughs> 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 straight BS, man. Like, I mean, that's all I can say is straight BS, really. I ain't going to get too much into that. But uh, I'm just like, how how could you be, like, the president that's done, like, the most for us since Abraham Lincoln? Like, I, I haven't seen it. Maybe maybe I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. Maybe I just don't know. Maybe just a little sense. oblivious to it. Right. Yeah, right. Maybe, yeah maybe I'm oblivious. So I don't know. So, but no, yeah, that's, I, what he, that's what he claims. But No, I, what you – no, what you what you what you, what you feel like that time like we like like maybe maybe it's something we missing maybe it's something we missing maybe it's something we missing. Um, I mean, you know what's crazy is it gets to that point where they can almost excuse me they can almost say stuff like that and it'll have you thinking like, see maybe he I, right like maybe I, I mean he did have me thinking maybe, though he did have me you thinking know what like, maybe I did miss I don't know like and I, I mean personally I I feel uncomfortable when. Anybody in that position or anybody that's not black says that they do stuff for black people or says mm-hmm. that they, mm-hmm. you know, I I just, I don't, I feel personally uncomfortable when I hear something like that. It just mm-hmm. doesn't sit right because there's black people that literally are dying for our freedom, that fight for our freedom, that, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. for some rich white person to say something like that, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. That's a fact, man. Um, You know, like, like how you said, you know, it, he he made me think like, damn, maybe, you know, just because I didn't hear about it don't mean that it didn't mm-hmm. happen or doesn't mean yeah, that it right. doesn't exist. So, um, you know, I definitely was trying to, uh, you know, do my due diligence with it and uh, do my homework. And um, I mean, man, when it comes to the whole Republicans and the Democrats, man, I feel like this is, this is something that's been going on for a minute, you know, and mm-hmm. I feel like it's going to take something from both parties. You know, I don't think uh, all of the, all of the questions will be solved just based on one party. You know, um, I, I think, right. I think it's going to take, you know, both parties, you know, um, sure. 
I don't I don't like when you know when people say you know I I've done so much for the black community since blah 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 or I've done so much for the white community since blah 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 like yeah. even when they talk about you know like the LGBT community like like if I have done things for a community and things to that nature I shouldn't have to continue to keep saying it because that right. community that I help knows good and damn well that I did my part. You know what I'm saying? Right. Anybody should be spreading that word. I'm pretty sure it should be the people in that community. You know what I mean? Right. right. So and the reason why I say BS yeah. is because I'm like, one person can only do so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, for him to say that, I'm like, oh, you can only do yeah. so much as a president as it is. Like, so I, I, I was just kind of biased about you know what he was saying. Mm -hmm. In his his personality, he wants to get credit for everything. You know, right. he wants to he wants to be that guy that people look at like, yeah, he's the savior. So, yeah, I'm, it made me uncomfortable, but I also wasn't surprised because it came from him. You know, yeah, no lie. When uh, when I talk to um when I talk to some some clients who are like Trump supporters, mm -hmm. that's exactly like I've heard a couple people use that word exactly, savior. And when I think yeah. of savior, bro, I don't know <laughs> if it's just me, bro. That's but crazy. when I think of savior, I think of like God, mm -hmm. you know, like I associate savior with a God. And I don't, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm just like, I, I would never depict a person to be a God. You know what I'm saying? Right. And mm -hmm. for you to think that a person, again, I'm not telling you what to think of that like that. But you know, I I I I think that you know you should definitely um, make sure that you be careful of the word usage that you use. You know what I mean? Like if he's somebody right. who you like, all right, that's cool. If he's somebody who you know you agree with to the utmost extent, all right, that's great. But for you to call mm -hmm. somebody a savior, I mean, you know. But again, man, you know everybody has their own point of views. You know what I mean? So yeah, I dig it. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I don't dig it, but you know. It, yeah, I guess I if it yeah. helps you sleep at night, that's what it is. Yeah, you know what yeah. I, mean? yeah. So, I don't know if y'all have seen. I, I'll get you the name probably on the next podcast, the next <laughs> episode we do. But uh, there's a show on Netflix, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what it's based off of is how mm -hmm. there's political parties that people look at as godly and mm -hmm. as their saviors, mm -hmm. and they groom. It's cr it's crazy. It's crazy. I, 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 I get it. That more. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Once I get the name, I'm, I'm mad I can't think of the name right now. It literally was just right at the top of my head. But once I get the name, I, I, I'll definitely, I'll let, I'll definitely let you know what it is. Okay. But it's super interesting. It'll have you looking at politics and have you looking closely into what he's saying even more. Like, mm -hmm. he's called himself the savior, you know, mm -hmm. when, when he's holding the Bible in his hand for certain photo ops, you know, mm -hmm. there's, it's symbolic. It's symbolic, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So, yeah. It's deep. It's deep. <laughs> What's up, good people? It's your boy, Melly Mel, a.k.a. King Jaffe. One third of the GMS podcast. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope you guys like, share, and comment. And don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys. Salute.